Hello and welcome to our next installment of the National Museum of the Marine Corps Weapons Wednesday. I'm Jonathan Bernstein, the museum's arms and armor curator. Today we're going to look at the M2 and M3 carbine. While many people are familiar with the M1 carbine from World War II and the current M4 carbine, the two evolutionary steps in light rifles between the two are often overlooked. Both the M2 and M3 evolved from the M1 and were very similar with most parts being interchangeable. The M2 was introduced late in World War II and added a select fire capability allowing the Marine to fire at both semi or fully automatic. The M2 did see limited service on Okinawa in April 1945, but saw its widespread combat use starting five years later in Korea. As World War II came to a close, new weapons technology was growing at an incredible rate. By the Battle of Okinawa, the U.S. was fielding its first night vision systems. The T3 carbine sniper scope was, combination was developed concurrently with the M2 carbine and used the same basic weapon. However, unlike the M2, the T3 mounted an infrared night vision sniper scope that would allow Marines and soldiers to see and fight at night. The T3 saw limited service on Okinawa with both the Army and Marines and was successful enough to warrant further development. The original sniper scope mounted on the T3 placed the infrared illuminating element under the forestock on the M2, with the scope mounted on top of the receiver, and the power source would be worn on the Marine's back. This was standardized as the M3 carbine M1 sniper scope after it was accepted by the War Department in the months after war's end. The M1 scope was limited to about 75 yards detection range, and its effective engagement range was significantly shorter than that. The next development of the infrared sniper scope came barely two years later with the introduction of the M3's carbine M2 sniper scope in 1947. The IR illuminator was moved from under the forestock to atop the scope and power was boosted, pushing detection range out to roughly 100 yards, which allowed engagement at roughly 75. On 5 October 1949, the Marine Corps Equipment Board requested an M3 carbine M3 sniper scope combination from the Army for suitability trials with the Marines. The test article arrived the following April, and the test program began on the 18th as Test Project 719. After three months of testing, the evaluation board identified 18 serious deficiencies with the system and ceased testing. The Project 719 report further suggests that both the Army and Marine Corps test examples be returned to the manufacturer with a list of deficiencies, requiring all to be corrected before resumption of the program. The M3 carbine M3 sniper scope was eventually adopted by both the Army and Marines in 1951, and the first examples began reaching frontline Marines in Korea in 1952. It's unclear just how many got to combat units, but we do know that the 5th Marines were at least given familiarization training on the type in 1952. The system worked well for detecting advancing North Korean and Chinese troops in the dark Korean nights, but once contact was initiated, the extra bulk of the scope power pack and cables made it very difficult to use in a firefight. While not a very successful system, the M3 carbine paved the way for future night vision systems. Technology built on lessons learned from the M3 series continued to develop the Marines' ability to fight at night over the subsequent decades. For more information on the Arms and Armor Collection and the other fascinating artifacts in the National Museum of the Marine Corps Collection, please check out our website and social media pages.